welcome everyone here and uh, we also welcome to people that will be joining us through the media in uh, different uh, parts of, uh, of the world actually that uh, this will be uh, posted. Um, we're going to start uh, this uh, meeting with uh, a prayer and uh, some reading as well and uh, we'll uh, give the time to uh, medium to give us the that. their error and are now waiting for a chance. We all make mistakes and hope for an opportunity to make things right. If you close yourself off in your pain and want nothing more to do with them, your attitude is just as bad as if not worse than this. Do not let your wounded pride rob you of an excellent opportunity for a triumph triumph over yourself. So we would like to start this meeting this morning, this beautiful sunny morning. Thank you God. Thank you spiritual mentor. Thank you for allowing us to be here once again united in your name, receiving as always your blessings, your love, your compassion, that forgives our mistakes every day, as you incite us through this message, please help us always forgive others as well. Help us to be receptive, tolerant, and compassionate. Help us to accept everyone as they truly are. As children who need support to grow. Thank you, God, for making possible for us to be here and to listen and learn from the lecture we are about to receive. And may everyone be enlightened by these words. that will hopefully touch our hearts. Thank you so much. And we ask your permission to open this meeting this morning. So be it. Amen. Thank you, Miriam. Uh, today's uh, topic is divine faith and human faith. And if we uh, try, or we define faith as uh, something that we may understand that is there or exists, but we do not know exactly what it is. But so far I came up uh, uh, myself when I think about faith, it's just another tool that God gives us to all his children. And it's just a blessing, having the faith. I could merely say today that we all are born with faith. 
And faith is a very, in a way, strange uh, phenomenon that happens. But it's a very powerful one. And I'm going to, uh, the this topic is just uh, one page. Very fast. But very fundamental. And I don't want to express too much about my thoughts about this topic. I more likely want to read because I want those words to be conveyed to you exactly how it's written. And it starts saying, faith is the innate feeling that that exists in every human being of their future destiny. It is the awareness that they have immense faculties whose germ has been deposited in them in latent state at first in which they must hatch and grow through each person's active will. I remember uh, some page, some uh, passages from uh, the gospel when Jesus Christ came to to people that he healed or did something good for them, and he at the end uh, he he replied. He said, "Your faith has saved you." So faith is a very important. Uh, matter that we have to take in consideration in every single time in our lives. It doesn't matter in what moment we're living at or how difficult time we're passing. Faith will make us go beyond our feelings, our diseases, our troubles. We just passed uh, or was almost passing through this pandemic and this is a very very good way of uh, us to show faith in God faith that is that he is there and uh, there's a a reading here that I have that is it says do only what is right and put all your trust in God it's very easy to say but sometimes it's difficult to follow and uh, then the question comes up and says, how does this work? And it says, our trust in God sustains emotional equilibrium in difficult situations. Thus, avoiding depressing states of mind, which make us vulnerable, vulnerable to lower influences. Doing what is right synchronizes us with the sources of life and gives us the infallible protection of the spirit benefactors. So if we do put uh, our faith in God, we already have something with us that is powerful. It says that with faith we can do so many things. And but where is where is that faith really coming from? If we think that uh, faith is something that is there, but we cannot really understand it sometimes where it comes from, it only uh, uh, makes me think that faith is inside of us, and not only in, in inside of our physical body. But it's in our spirit, in our soul. And make us either go the right direction or the wrong direction. It's giving us the, the opportunity for us to continue on, on our uh, everyday life without any uh, lack 
of energy or any lack of uh, mental disorder in order for us to err. Give us power in ourselves, and this power can be conveyed or shared with another people or that, another group like, like here. Because they're saying that if you have faith, you have a lot. We have all we have on some point in our, in our lives is uh, uh, we are um, in contact with faith. As soon as we start getting into a, a trouble, then we start thinking about, and we have two things to do. First, we can look down and forget about that this problem can affect us or look up for help. If we look up for help and uh, we uh, recall what I just read about trusting God, then we're not alone anymore. We empower ourselves with that faith. We cover ourselves with that uh, definite, definite uh understanding that there's something more powerful can give us a hand when we need it. Uh, with that in mind, I need to uh, go back to what it says. Uh, faith can be either, either human or divine. And at the beginning, I didn't understand what's the difference between human uh, uh, faith in, in, and divine faith. And it says here, in all the incarnates, if all the incarnates were well per, uh, persuaded of the power which they have in them, if they wanted to pull their will at the service of this force, they would be able to accomplish what until now we call prodigies and which are simply a develop, development of human faculties. And uh, reading this, I came across to something very, very interesting, very, something that's been uh, hit in my mind and my understanding to understand it. It's something that we all are familiar with since even since we were kids, and that is called magnetism. Do we know where magnetism comes from or how is it formed? That's a question that I ask myself, and I couldn't get any answer. But then something came up to me and started thinking about that. Magnetism is, all, all, uh, is something that is, it has been already created everywhere in the universe. It's like all the planets that are existing right now, they're existing and they're not, uh, uh, they're, they have been created as magnetism is, is, uh, is being created as well. And uh, some of the, uh, some of the, uh, the passages of uh, the gospel, they call about uh, all the things that Jesus did, or some of the, the uh, Jesus did, that for the people and uh, some uh, regular people, they still do not understand how he did that. Well, say, well, he's he's part of uh, uh, of God. He's the son of God, and he did all this things very unfamiliar to everybody. And they didn't have any better word to describe it by saying it was a miracle. And what is a miracle? On that time, they couldn't understand. And sometimes, he, uh, uh, actually today, some people, they do not understand miracles. But in the Spiritism, we already know that a true uh, um Miracle is not really that difficult to understand how it's done. Spiritism explains how it's done because it's more advanced. 
It says that miracle is something that we cannot comprehend and is out of the understanding of everybody's understanding. But it's it's something extraordinary. But for Jesus, this one not, was not really extraordinary. He's, he has the knowledge, he has the power, and continues doing that. Uh, I want to read this one that uh, it's here. Uh, Christ, who performed material miracles, showed these uh, very miracles, what humans ca can do when they have faith. That means we can do also miracles. That was something very interesting for me when I learned this. Now, what were such miracles, if not natural effects, whose cause was unknown to humans then, but with its largely, largely explained today, and which will be completed understood through the study of the spiritism and magnetism. That's when I started thinking about magnetism. And I'm not talking about just having this piece of metal that has certain, certain attraction to another uh, uh, charge uh, <clears throat> uh, metal. It can be attracted and they, get a, uh, uh, they, get, they can be put together like that. Uh, this magnetism here is something that we use here in the, uh, when we get together, when we do some uh, healing, we're using magnetism that we, it's already in ourselves. It can be delivered to other people for healing, for make them more comfortable, or simply to produce the necessary equilibrium or balance in the spiritual uh, uh, situation that they might come. If somebody is, comes with a very bad anxiety, and they come distressed, they're very well distressed. Everybody can notice that. And it's so funny because after doing some magnetic passes, that person can come out of the door a lot more calm with more understanding. So what happened? Did we do a miracle? Is that really a miracle or is that something that is in us that Jesus Christ did? He shows how to do it. So, And he says here that we can do these miracles. I want to read about the emission of magnetic energy. The emission of magnetic energy depends on a, on a person's will. So meaning that you really have to be willing to do that. Therefore, we all do it unconsciously at different times independent of special conditions. And when I read this one, I says, what is, the, what is this thing talking about? When it comes to us in, very, in various forms or uh, <clears throat> at any times, unconsciously, that means, are we doing this? healing, are we doing this magnetism, good magnetism to a, another person or persons? Are we doing it without our will or not? And I start thinking, I start thinking, well, how is this done? Uh, how, how this can happen? Sometimes when I have questions myself, I do want to have examples so I can uh, explain what I'm trying to say. And uh, gave me the answer in the next uh, paragraph. Uh, when that question came up, it says daily. So daily we have this, this emission of magnetism daily. Sometimes we, we don't notice we're doing it. And women, they do it a lot. Surprisingly. But I say, how, how I do that? A person, a female person can ask me, how do I do that? It says, it says here, exactly a mother comforting a child. 
that's a magnetic feeling, a magnetic energy delivered to a son of a daughter. And they do that every single day. When they have the baby in their arms, nourish them, they just giving that magnetic energy to them to make them comfortable. Another example is, uh, it says, uh, a doctor treating a patient. I remember that uh, when, uh, we had a, a, a medical doctor from uh, our family in Mexico, and uh, my mom, she had so much faith to that doctor. As soon as my mother, she crossed into the office of this doctor, she started feeling better. And I said, how could that be? And then he told us the story that he learned that from another a professor of his, that when he was uh, consulting a patient, he was taking notes. And and my friend, he says, I, when I went to see his notes, he started writing all the, not the medical history, but all those situations that that mother or that patient had, all those things that they worry that person, he started writing them. That tells me that the doctor has to have good ears first to listen to that person. Most of the time, I've seen so many people that they need to be uh, heard. Because if a patient comes to me, and I, I don't even pay attention to what the person is talking to me about. I just say, okay, just take an aspirin and call me in the morning. I'm not doing that magnetism that he's talking about. Probably that person will not even feel anything better after that. But if that person has a pretty bad uh, uh, depression or somebody passed away in their family and I don't listen to what is really important to that person, I'm not taking care of that person. It's, it, it would be very difficult for me to understand where is the problem of that person. And I can mention so many instances where people, they need to be heard. Then after hearing what they have, then we need to deliver that magnetism that is the best medicine for everybody, which is called love. That's the best. Love is the best medicine to anybody that is having a problem. Another example is a teacher while teaching And it's, uh, it's it, it, this is a, a, a first thing came to my mind was seeing Bernadette here. Bernadette, she is inside of a classroom with his children and with her uh, all her energy and everything, she starts transmitting all these nice thoughts, trying to make people to understand. At the same time, she's understanding them and she gets understood as well. Another uh, example that calls here is somebody, uh, let's say, in a nursery that, uh, that is taking care of plants. People that they, they uh, are there inside, uh, I don't know if I said a nursery, I think the nursery is for kids, but it's also the same thing for plants, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so being said that uh, this person sometimes, or I've seen people, especially my mother, she used to care of her plants. She loved plants everywhere in the house. And she started talking to them. And I said, my mom is crazy. She's talking to plants. <laughs> but no, it says here, you're transmitting that energy to apparently something or some or something that is not really talking back to you, but is feeling that response. Same thing we do with animals. If we show them affect, we show them care, then start having a good relationship. But I wouldn't recommend to start doing this to 
certain uh, animals like a lions or hyenas. Uh, that doesn't work for them now. <clears throat> All uh, are identified by a common uh, thread. They they emanate magnetism that involves the beneficiary. That means meaning that with that uh, faith, you uh, enclosing that other person or that all other uh, people that you're caring for, you're conveying that positive energy. Now, can be also you can start delivering bad energy as well, but this is not the case here that we're discussing today. Faith is something that for me is something that I really care about. And I don't recall myself being in a situation that I, that I did not have faith. Um, we are put to to, te to to test our faith so many times, sometimes almost every day. How or, or what for is for us to get stronger. If we don't have trials, if we don't have uh, tests in our life, our life will be just very simple, it will be something very superficial. But if we do have trials, if we do have something to fight for, then makes us stronger and make us uh, to learn more about it. Because uh, it came to me once, uh, some time ago, that I said that we are victims of our own, own ignorance every single day. The day I couldn't uh, fix my car, I had to pay money because I didn't know how to fix it. If I wouldn't know how to fix it, then I wouldn't have to spend that money. So I, my ignorance made, made me suffer a little bit. But then I learned from that. And I said, well, I can do that. And now uh, uh, we are living in a very beautiful situation. I love this life that we're living right now, actually at this time, with some more technology. There's a lot of things we can go on online. I'll just get my phone, po uh, uh, punch uh, my question to Google, or even talk, and I get the answer. I, I haven't practiced medicine myself for quite a long time. And then uh, there are some things that uh, that came to me and, uh, and the question sometimes my wife, she asked me, she says, what is this? I said, well, wait a minute. I don't want to say something. I hate myself to say something that I really do not understand or I don't know exactly how it is. I like to be honest with people. Somebody asked me something. I said, well, I really don't know it, but let me find out what it is. So I put it on Google and I said, this is for this and this is for that. The life is becoming very simple for us. Why? Because we have the technology. We have so many tools right now to, to learn from. We can learn the gospel. We can learn the spiritism. Right on, on, on the palm of your, hand, of your hand. Which is great, isn't it? I think everybody will agree with me that our life can be easier like that. I remember before, if uh, somebody calls me and I, I have to go see that person, I, I used to have my, my map, a book, where I had to go page by page and then look for the address. Now I can just put it in there and it takes me exactly the place I want to go, all over the world. And when I say all over the world, I'm referring also to Mexico City, because the numbers they do not they are not really precise. Sometimes they're not even in order. But when I put it in my GPS, it took me exactly to the place. So that's a big advantage. But nevertheless, 
instead of uh, trying us right now with the technology to go to Mars, I would suggest instead of going over there first, let's first solve what we have problems here in, in the world. For forget about trying to conquer another uh, um, uh, planet. Let's take care of this planet right now. We still have so many things to fix and to cooperate. And one of the things that faith is calling us for is for us to do to action. Gospel is action as well. But faith, if you have faith to do something, not because you trust in God and says God is there, he's going to solve everything. No, we have our plan. We have our mission to be here. I remember some time ago uh, in my church, uh, uh, one of the uh, teachers down there, he had three questions on the board. And I didn't really learn uh, or read that uh, particular lesson. And he, he said, uh, the first question was, what are we? Then uh, with uh, the spiritism um, knowledge, I could answer that question easily. And I thought it in, by myself. I said, we're here. We are incarnated spirits. That's where we are. Second uh, question was, what are we here in the Air Force for? What is our mission? What is the purpose for us to be in this earth at this time, at this incarnation? Well, it's also simple to answer. We're here to um, expiate our faults from the past. That's what we're here for. This is our mission here, to, to try to become better, to try to follow the good. So in the next ex step, once we leave, our body here and come back to the spiritual uh, um, realm, then we have that knowledge. Then we know what to do. With that in mind, we really know what's, what's, uh, what's supposed to be expecting to us when we go back to the uh, spiritual realm, then we understand that that does not exist. It only the human flesh is the one that goes back to where it came from. So what is that uh, thought about being afraid of, of uh, dying? If somebody says, are you afraid to die? Say, well, when am I going to die? I'm not going to die. I'm going to live forever. I've been created eternal. That I can, I'm going to lose my body, yes. But my spirit will continue living. It'll continue on. And that I, I, I can tell you this not because of faith. Because now I'm certain of all that and all the spirits that we communicate with or they communicate through us. They're teaching us all these facts. It's very fundamental for us to start understanding and also delivering all this knowledge to everybody that still just living by faith will not be necessary. It will be necessary to live by faith, but also by understanding, by learning what's, uh, what's next. That we have a plurality of, of, uh, of lives, plural, plurality of existences, it's amazing. I know for a fact as soon as I start learning Spiritism that this cannot be my only life. Who knows when my, my spirit was created? Perhaps we cannot even measure that with hours or years or any, any measure of time. But I know it's been a long time. And uh, it comes to the next uh, thing that I'm going to read to you.
how can we avoid failure? It says, it is, nece uh, it is necessary to strengthen and develop a spiritual defenses by raising our vibratory level levels and tuning into frequencies that place us above the disturbances in the environment. And with this, I learned that we can be contaminated not only by bacteria or viruses, but also contaminated by bad influences from lower spirits. This may be uh, strange for some people to hear this for the first time if they're not uh, uh, acquainted with the spiritism. But for us, we already know that these things exist. They communicate and we're listening. We're listening uh, to them and we can get influence. So we have to create our own defenses for that as we get the defensive defenses for viral uh, viral uh, uh, diseases. We get vaccines, we get um, medications that can make us stronger and fight uh, uh, this uh, uh, infections. But what, uh, uh, what can we help us to, from those bad influences from these spirits that I'm talking about? Well, first, uh, then we have to trust God and following the good. That's a good shield for us to start with. If we have uh, a spiritual balance, if we grow morally and intellectually, very difficult, a bad spirit will touch us. Who He will not or she will not uh, take the time to start wasting time doing with us. So they know we understand what they're doing. Because we are uh, immersed in a notion of mental waves that are emitted by incarnate and discarnate spirits. That's what I'm talking about. Those discarnate spirits, they're there. We already know for a fact that they're there and sometimes they have they, they want to come and disturb us if we're not prepared, if we don't have the mentality strong enough and the faith with us to fight them, then they may be able to cause some harm to us. Uh, something that we have called obsession which is pretty bad sometimes. And we see several examples around the world. Wars, they can be created by those bad influences. Fights and people. People that sometimes they commit suicide. They are sometimes doing those things because bad influences. So let's continue living all by the faith and by divine faith as well, so we can conquer our next step in, in our life. And I say all these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much.